I'm not sure if you can hear me. But I wanted to start talking to you from back here. Just to kind of make a point a little bit. That sometimes we hear people, but we don't see them. And sometimes we see people, but we don't hear them. And our emphasis this morning is going to be up lies. And that how the enemy is so cunning to spread that lies. And he has lied to you, telling you that you've gone too far. That you've done too much for him to be able to come in and reach you. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord Almighty sees you. The lies of the enemy tries to come up and raise itself against you. That somehow your situation now dictates your destiny. <laughs> lies. To try to destroy your confidence in the Lord. I know individuals who've just been on fire. And then that fire just dwindles away. I've known people whose confidence in the Lord has been so profound and strong. Yet we don't see them anymore. The enemy has come in. And he's begun to whisper lies that go against the word of God. And when our confidence is shaken, when the foundation of our confidence, which is Jesus Christ, when that confidence is shaken, then he can come in and do what he wants. When he wants, however he wants. But when we understand the word of God and the promises that he has laid, let me tell you right now, there should be absolutely no reason why your foundation should be shaken. There should not be no reason why the confidence that you have in the Lord should be shaken. And as I was studying and preparing the Lord took me to Isaiah chapter 36. And you can find the same storyline in 2 Kings verse 19, but I chose to stay here in Isaiah. And Isaiah was a mighty king, one that trusted the Lord. Who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But there was still opposition around him. Threatening him. Coming against him. And coming against the promises that God has given him. Attempting to shake his confidence. Lies. In Isaiah 36, starting in verse 4 and verse 5. It says, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have counsel and might for war, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending that you rebel against me? Now this is a field commander that the king of Assyria sent to 
to speak to some of the council of King Hezekiah. And he's basically coming up to him and telling them, what are you basing your confidence on that you would even think of rebelling against me? <coughs> and then in verse 8, it says, he tells them, come now, make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses if you can put riders on them. And then in verse 13, he says, Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Do not, do not deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord when he says, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. He's saying, don't even believe what is being taught to you. Don't even believe what is being said to you. And this story works so well in our personal lives. Because there's someone that's going to come in. And try to destroy what it is that the Lord is doing in your life. What he's building up in your life. The will that he has for you. That he has placed before you and has been unfolding. Don't listen to this. The lie is sometimes told with such confidence. That we can begin to question what it is that God is speaking to us. Let me say that again. The lies are spoken with such confidence that we begin to question what God has spoken to us. He says, do not listen to Hezekiah in verse 16. This is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then each of you will eat fruit from your own vine and fig tree and drink water from your own cistern. Until I come and take you to a land like your own. A land of grain and new wine. A land of bread and vineyards. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you when he says the Lord will deliver us. Have the gods of any nations ever delivered their lands from the hand of King Assyria? Your circumstance and your situation, whatever it may be, the enemy will try desperately to, ch to shake the core of what God has spoken to you. To the point of almost ridicule and laughter. And this can take different forms. But imagine this. The Lord has a calling and a purpose for each and every single individual in this church right now. That's not including the city and beyond. The Lord will begin and has already begun to reveal things to you. Has begun building within you. Has been showing you things and revealing things to you. That he may be glorified through you. <coughs> but when the lies come in, <coughs> and we are not aware of the magnitude of the effect that these have on us, then we are not aware of the potential of our enemy. 
If we're truly in a battle, as the scriptures have said, a spiritual warfare, then wouldn't it be wise to know and to understand who your enemy is? He will use accusations. He will use your past. He will use what you've done. And he has a way of bringing that fall forward very quickly. But let me tell you right now. That it is an absolute lie. And when he says, when the enemy comes to you and tries to tell you that somehow, who do you think you are? When the enemy tries to come in and say, who do you put your trust in that you dare question what I'm doing? <laughs> and if we don't understand and know that voice, then how could we possibly respond? So if he walks in the dark, Because like I said, that that lie can be said with such confidence that we begin to question like, ah, you know, that's, that's right. You know, who, 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 do, who do I think I am as a Christian? You know, what, what can I possibly accomplish? You know, what, what can I do for the kingdom of God? They don't know what I've been through or what I've done or the things I did. They don't understand. And if they knew, and if they knew, that's right. They probably wouldn't want to have anything to do with me. But God has a plan. Yes. Amen. And he has a purpose yes. for each yes. and every Amen. person sitting in this church right now. And when this field commander tries to come in and with boldness try to tell these, these guys and, and delivering this message for King Hezekiah, telling them, don't even try. Don't even bother attempting to come against the king of Assyria. Don't even try. Just sit down and be quiet. You don't need to worship. Just close your mouth. You don't need to lift, lift your hands up. Keep them down. Who do you think you are? When I talked earlier about breaking through, the supposed embarrassment of not praising him openly and freely. Basically what we're doing is saying, yes, you are right. Who am I? But if I'm going to teach you something this morning, if I'm going to give you anything that you can take with you, is to know and to understand that nothing Absolutely nothing will come against what God has for you. And whatever the Lord has already deposited within you, whatever the Lord has already revealed to you, because he's already shown you something, he's already made it very clear to you, that you hold on to that. You do not let it go. Amen. As we continue in this church and God continue to bring in and grow and do whatever it is that he wants to do within this church. 
It's imperative that God's people know and understand who they are in Him. That we may be prepared to bring in the wounded and the hurt and say that there is healing here. There is refuge here. Regardless of what the enemy tried to do to you, you can come here and you will find healing for your soul. Because the Spirit of God rests in this place. And not because we have four walls and we say it's church, but because you are in this place. The Holy Spirit of God dwells in who? In you. In us. We can no longer adhere to the lies that the enemy tries to place in our ear. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we're casting that out. In the name of Jesus, we're casting those lies out right now in his name. Lies can no longer begin to function fully in the presence of God. Depression cannot function fully in the presence of God. Anxiety cannot function fully in the presence of God. I'm telling you this because the enemy will use anything. He's so desperate. Almost makes me sick. Of how desperate he is to use things so insignificant to bring God's people down. But look at what King Hezekiah, when he got the news that this message was being told. I mean, they were hurt. Even when they went back and gave this message to King Hezekiah, they went already with their robes ripped. Isaiah 37, 16 through 20. Lord Almighty, <coughs> the God of Israel enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to all the words that Senator Cherim has said to ridicule the living God. True, Lord, that the Assyrian king have laid waste all these peoples and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Catch this in verse 20. Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, our Lord, are the only God. He took this straight to prayer. He took those accusations and that ridicule and that blasphemy against the living God and he took it to prayer. He took it to him. And he did not ask that he be comforted. He did not ask that his life may be a little easier. He did not ask these things. He knew, he knew and understood the importance that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, Lord, are the only God. Yeah. 
Sometimes we get caught up. And we make too much about ourselves. I know this might just sting a little bit, but just hear me out. Sometimes we make this too much about me and my issues and what I'm going through and what I'm feeling and the emotions that I'm going through and the hurts that I'm going through. And don't get me wrong. The Bible says we can make all, re our, all our requests made known to him. Don't get me wrong. But an understanding that ultimately above your comfort, above your issues, above your problems, above the emotions, above all these things, that the key to what we do here as Christians and believers in Jesus Christ is to make him known. That's it. Amen. When we grasp that and truly just have that enter into our hearts that it is not about me, but it's about Him. <laughs> and what I can do to glorify Him. Yes. And what I can do to praise Him and worship Him. Jesus. When that understanding comes deep within us, the enemy, when he tries to come in, just like they try to do with King Hezekiah. And speak some nonsense to you with confidence. Oh, you just don't know my God. You will stand firm. You will stay grounded. And nothing will shake your foundation. Because everything that we do as individuals and corporately as a church body is that God is made known everywhere. That God may be glorified through us. Broken people who had no chance but because of what was done and accomplished on the cross and the blood that was shed, Amen. that our sins may be washed away Amen. and that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence. <laughs> Nothing will shake your foundation. Nothing will shake what the Lord is doing in your life. Amen. Nothing will shake what he has called you to do in the sphere of your influence. And each and every one of us have a sphere of influence. Amen. And we are called to be the light everywhere we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the of God. We are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Amen. But focusing on that first part, we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. When you understand the true knowledge of God, you will understand how big and how mighty our God is. How loving 
and merciful and graceful our God is. When that true knowledge of the understanding of who God is is revealed within us, nothing will stand against you. Not because of anything you could ever accomplish, but because of the Holy Spirit of God that dwells in you. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon. Mm. How many of you guys know this one already? Hmm? How many of you guys know this one already? No weapon formed against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me Amen. says the Lord no weapon formed against you shall prosper so when that commander tries to come up to you taking orders from the darkness and the demonic and they are sent to you to spew lies to you. Understanding that, but that whatever they try to raise up against you, it is absolutely nothing. It, was, it is only there to attempt, <laughs> to intimidate. <clears throat> the only power the enemy has is the power that we give to him. But as followers of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, in tongues glorifying him in your closet praising him on your knees it does not stand a chance what the Lord is going to accomplish will be accomplished what the Lord is going to accomplish will be accomplished. And we have to believe that. We have to believe that with everything that is within us. And we have to know and understand and come to the true knowledge of who our God is. Because it is my prayer those that are here and that the Holy Spirit has called you here will be here and those that are out there waiting for someone with the courage and the understanding and knowing who your God is will go out and speak life to the broken
can't sit and pretend like where the Lord has brought me that this is as far as it goes. But truly believing within you that what the Lord has for you is so much greater than what he has for you right now. We praise him for today. We glorify him for today. But we also thank him for what's coming. And we praise him for what's coming. And we say, Lord, whatever you have, I am open to it. I will not follow in. I will not allow the lies of the enemy to infiltrate what you're doing in me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. We can have everyone stand here. Glory be to God. It's very vital that we understand what this book says. They're not just distant stories that have no relevance to where I'm at right now but an understanding that as we read and understand the word of God you will be unstoppable you will be unstoppable believe that there's somebody here this morning who the enemy has been lying to way too long Way too long. Of comfortability. Okay, you've been sitting in way too long. We want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. So I ask you that you take a step of boldness and come up to the front. Come up to the altar. for Jesus let's be radical for Jesus if we're going to be the church that is reflected in his word then let us be radical for him not holding back but believing for greater things and that the power of the Holy Spirit will grant you everything, everything, every spiritual gift to accomplish what it is that he's calling you to accomplish. No more lies. No more lies. No more lies. For those that are out here, I want you to grab the hand of the person next to you. I'm a prayer in the name of Jesus. I want you guys to hang on here. We're gonna have some people praying for you in a bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, right now in your precious and holy and powerful and glorious name. I pray any and every hindrance to be broken off right now in the name of Jesus. And whoever the devil has set to speak lies over us as individuals and as families, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, 
and each person here will seek you and seek you and seek you, Lord God, that they may be overflowing with your goodness, overflowing with your power, and overflowing with your love. Lord God, that the enemy will shake in fear for what God is going to do through these people. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we cast it out in your precious name. You will be glorified. And your name will be made known to all. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. May you be glorified. In the name of Jesus.